Okay, we've now seen that we can only control one of our columns one at a time. But we're still missing something, and if you've done lots with LEDs before, then this might be pretty obvious to you. If not, you might not know that we need to have a resistor for each of our LEDs. That is, whenever we turn on an LED, it will only take 2 volts, but what we provide is greater than that. If we're using a GPIO pin, we're providing 3.3 volts. So we need to do something with that extra voltage. If we don't, we break an LED, or even worse, we break one of those GPIO pins. We burn those out. So we have two different options. We could either put resistors along our cathodes, or we could put resistors along our anodes. So let's first think about putting the resistors along the cathodes. That would be if we had our LED matrix, that we'd only need three more resistors. And the reason we only need three more is we're only turning on one of these columns at a time. So here I drew one of the columns. And when that column's finished, then it would be the next column, but it would be connected again to the cathode, so again to a resistor if we placed one there. So let's see if a setup like this could work. Now if we're turning on our LEDs, then of course we'll need to be sending in some voltage here. So we would have 3.3 volts coming in. Now for one of our LEDs to turn on, well then we would need to connect ground to this next pin, or that is GPIO, that is set to low. So that will be zero volts. With this setup, then we will have current run through this, and we only want two volts to go into our LED. So that means our resistor is responsible for taking 1.3 volts. Now that's not all that we know. We also know that we only want about four milliamps to go through the LED. That means we'll also have four milliamps going through our resistor. Now we know voltage, we know current, that means for this, we could calculate the resistance for this resistor. We could do that using Ohm's law, and that is voltage over current. Now we have to remember to change milliamps to amps in this case. Now if I do this calculation, I get 325 ohms. Now I don't have a 325 ohm resistor, but I can round that up to a 330 ohm resistor. Okay, that works for one LED, if I want to turn one LED on. But imagine I want to do more. Maybe I want to turn on two LEDs. So there's nothing special here. I can do the exact same thing as I did in the first branch. And I could do that again on that second branch. The only thing that changes when I turn on more of these branches is that I have more current coming out of my GPIO pin. So I could have four milliamps, if I have two branches, then I'll have 8 milliamps. And of course, all three, I'd have 12 milliamps. Now, there is one problem here. My GPIO pin can only safely provide about 16 milliamps, and I'm already at 12 milliamps. So I'm a little high in that regard. But so long as my GPIO pin doesn't burn out, this will work. Now, at the end of this tutorial about LED matrices, I'll be doing an extra tutorial about how to use transistors. And by using transistors, we can avoid this uncomfortable problem by using the 5 volt rail, which we can take a lot more current from. But if we keep this each to 4 milliamps, we won't go over our maximum. Now let's consider the alternative that for each of our anodes, we place a resistor. So if we just look at one of our columns at a time, we would have some voltage being lost by a resistor and then some voltage being lost by our LED. Now, our LEDs each need, of course, two volts. And here we have no problem. That means our resistor has to take 1.3 volts because an electron going through here will lose 1.3 volts and then it will only go through one of these paths. So it will lose two volts, but who knows on which path. So overall, that electron will lose the 3.3 volts. What does cause us some trouble is when we consider current. Now we want four milliamps through here. And maybe we want four milliamps through this one, but this one could be off. So maybe we want zero milliamps. So that's eight milliamps. And then if I have eight milliamps, I could calculate the resistance for this. But 
here's the problem. What if I don't have two? What if I just have one? Then I should only calculate the resistance using formula amps. Or of course, if I use all three, then I should calculate the resistance of this resistor using 12 milliamps. So any resistor I pick won't be able to work for the different scenarios. And what will happen if I pick one resistor, how about the resistor I know somewhere in the middle, one that's good for six milliamps. What will happen is when I have more or less LEDs on, then my LEDs will be brighter or dimmer. Okay, so this is not ideal. This is not what we want. So the solution that we had before was a lot better. So when we wire our LED matrix, we just have to make sure that we put our resistors along our cathodes. And of course, that we are turning on one anode on at a time.